up till now we have talked about the nasal chambers and the internal opening now these internal nares and we are talking about the respiratory tract so we started with external nares which open or lead into nasal chambers then the three compartments that is vestibular respiratory and olfactory compartments and then the opening that is internal nares now these internal nares they open into an area which is known as nasopharynx this area has those openings that is internal nares and internal nares are closed by the extension of the soft palate which is known as uvula and this is at the time when we are swallowing this is all what we have seen now the next part is laryngopharynx so this is first part of pharynx we have already discussed this in digestive system that pharynx has three parts the nasopharynx where there is opening of these internal nares oropharynx and laryngopharynx so this is the lower part which is going to lead into the trachea that is the windpipe and just above it are the voice box or is the voice box or known as larynx larynx or voice box it is also known as adam's apple to understand the structure we will uh, take a special uh, thing but before that let us write down what exactly is this larynx made up of this larynx is made up of four cartilages one is thyroid cartilage and it is one in number or that is one the second is cricoid cartilage this is also one in number and third arytenoid cartilage which are two in number so that makes the total of four thyroid cartilage is the biggest and arytenoid cartilages are the smallest cartilages now this larynx is internally lined with ciliated columnar epithelium and once we understand the structure then we'll come to vocal cords now to understand how this larynx is what i have done is i have drawn these cartilages here on a piece of paper the cartilage which is seen in the form of alphabet i here it is white the upper end is uh, white and the lower end is also white and if we make a tube like structure that is the larynx so what we see is the front part that is the thyroid cartilage and if we can turn it like this so this thyroid cartilage covers the upper part of of the larynx as well as this lower part and the one which i have drawn with blue is complete it is from here to this end that means it makes the ring and on the back side there are two pyramid like triangular small structures these are arytenoid cartilages so to understand the shapes let us again open this the thyroid cartilage is the largest we have written it as the biggest cartilage or largest cartilage amongst these four and this is i english alphabet i shape here it is white this is the upper arm this is the lower arm the cricoid cartilage is a complete cartilage which is going to make the ring and these two black ones are arytenoid cartilages again let us make it in the form of a ring now this is the larynx so thyroid cartilage supports the larynx from the front the complete upper this is complete the red which is here this is the complete upper part which is supported by thyroid the front part which is supported by thyroid cartilage and
and again this lower part and as we can see this blue part in the bottom this is again the cricoid cartilage which makes the lower ring so if we have to write about this we will write thyroid cartilage supports front of the larynx upper and lower these parts cricoid cartilage it is a ring like cartilage and ring like cartilage and it supports only the lower part that is the bottom part only lower part and arytenoid these are triangular cartilages and they support the back part that too not completely so this is how this complete larynx is made up of four cartilages the largest one is thyroid supporting from the front upper and lower cricoid is ring like it completely supports the lower part and arytenoid are at the back side the triangular one now from the anterior side of the thyroid cartilage arises a bilobed structure which is called epiglottis so if we make this ring this is the ring then from this and say this is the thyroid cartilage that we have drawn here so from the anterior side arises a bilobed structure like this which is called the epi glottis and that closes the glottis so if epiglottis is the extension from the anterior part of thyroid cartilage so in this case in thyroid we have to add one more thing from anterior part arises a bilobed structure called epiglottis and epiglottis is going to close the glottis so this is what is the structure of our larynx it is more developed in males as compared to females four cartilages in all one thyroid one cricoid and two arytenoid cartilages and this helps us understand exact location of these cartilages this cartilage this uh, sorry this larynx is having two elastic flap like structures so if we see the section of the larynx if we cut the larynx transversely we are going to see two such flap like structures and these flap like structures are the vocal cords vocal cords are made up of elastic fibers elastic fibers and are lined by stratified squamous epithelium stratified squamous epithelium now if we have to just add one more thing here vocal cords are more developed in males or longer in males longer in males they are about 2.5 cm and slightly smaller in females and these are stretchable they stretch now when we uh, speak how is that sound created during inhalation the vocal cords or one more thing here this opening is known as glottis now when we are inhaling these vocal cords are relaxed and that is when the glottis is wide open so the air goes in now when we exhale the muscles contract these muscles are known as laryngeal muscles they contract bringing these vocal cords closer that means the vocal cords would move towards the inner side 
that would result in narrowing of glottis. So now if we have to imagine that if two flaps, two flaps are like this, these flaps when they come closer, the opening that is glottis is going to become narrower. And when the air is exhaled, that exhaling or moving out air vibrates these vocal cords and this vibration results in sound production. So normally when we speak we are exhaling or the sound is produced during exhalation. So during inhalation vocal cords are relaxed due to which the glottis is wide. Now when we exhale, that is during exhalation due to contraction of laryngeal muscles glottis gets narrower because the vocal cords are going to come closer so the vocal cords move in glottis gets narrow and that is when the sound is produced so here we can write, write and sound is produced due to vibration of vocal cords. So if we can normally feel it during inhalation the air simply goes in and when we are talking or when we are speaking that is the time we are actually exhaling and this glottis is closed by epiglottis when we are swallowing. So the structure of larynx made up of four cartilages, one thyroid, one cricoid cartilage and two arytenoid cartilage. The inner side of the larynx is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium and there are two uh, flaps which are stretched. They are called vocal cords. More developed in males, they are longer in males as compared to females. The opening between these vocal cords is called glottis which closes or which is closed by a bilobed flap like structure called epiglottis which is formed by the extension on the anterior side of thyroid cartilage. And this epiglottis uh, closes the glottis only when we are swallowing. Sound production during inhalation the uh, vocal cords are relaxed so the glottis is wide and the air goes in. When we are exhaling or when we have to talk, the laryngeal muscles contract bringing these vocal cords closer. So this opening glottis gets narrower and that is when the air which is coming out starts vibrating these vocal cords and sound production takes place. After this larynx, now the air after passing through this in initial part, it is going to get into trachea. So in the next part, we will take up trachea, bronchi and the other.